In the news this week, the government is accused of dragging its feet over dangerous addictive gambling machines, John Humphreys takes aim at the BBC's Thought for the Day, and we mark 500 years of the Reformation. Hello. Just one child in every 20,000 experiences transsexual feelings, according to a professor at a controversial gender identity clinic. Professor Gary Butler of the UK Gender Identity Development Service told BBC Radio 4 that it's incredibly rare for children to question their gender. And Lord Robert Winston, Emeritus Professor of Fertility Studies at Imperial College, warned about the impact of sex change surgery and hormone injections. If you look at the results of gender reassignment, the... Uh, the results are horrendous in so many, such a big proportion of cases. For example, with vaginal reconstruction, there are probably 40% of people who have that have some complication, often need further surgery. Uh, male reconstruction is very, very difficult. <clears throat> when you start taking off breasts, a large number, of probably 23%, according to a very recent paper, feel uncomfortable with what they've done. And I think those sorts of issues are important. Then, of course, what I have been seeing, of course, in a fertility clinic are the long-term results of often very unhappy people who now feel quite badly damaged. Kate, a medical student who spoke anonymously to the BBC, warned that the trans agenda may be perpetrating a great harm. I think by giving treatment to young children, we may be perpetrating a great harm and we might look back on this in, in 30 or 50 years and see it as one of the, you know, great medical blunders of the 21st century. The government has been accused of squandering an opportunity to curb the harms of dangerously addictive gambling machines known as fixed odds betting terminals. A long-awaited report by the Department for Digital, Culture, Media and Sport agreed maximum stakes should be lower but that further consultation was needed on the extent of the cut. The new delay, coupled with the indecisiveness of the report, has been met with criticism from several sides, with Labour's deputy leader Tom Watson calling it deeply disappointing. Director of Public Affairs at CARE, Dan Boucher, highlighted the damage that gambling liberalisation has done to society. We're very concerned about the destructive social consequences uh, that they have this results from the fact they combine a very high speed of play uh, with very high stakes. It's actually in principle possible to lose as much as £18,000 uh, in an hour. And there are all sorts of socially destructive consequences associated with this from relationship breakdown to failure to concentrate at work um, uh, through to actually people losing their tempers and attacking uh, fixed or paying terminal machines. The BBC has a sniggering contempt towards religion, a Church of England minister and Guardian columnist has said. Reverend Giles Fraser was responding to John Humphrey's criticism of the Today programme's Thought for the Day. Humphreys told the Radio Times it was inappropriate that Today should broadcast nearly three minutes of uninterrupted religion. We have Hindus, of course, and we have the occasional Muslim, the occasional Jew, but by and large it's Christian. Why? Reverend Fraser said the comments were part of a wider view at the corporation where faith is seen to be for the little people, for the stupid and the gullible. For some reason, the very presence of religion, even at the homeopathic levels at which it is entertained by the BBC, is perceived as some sort of insult to the precious, godless secularity of the news. And finally, Tuesday marked the anniversary of the start of the Protestant Reformation, an event described as the greatest spiritual revival since Pentecost. In 1517, Martin Luther nailed his 95 theses to the door of Wittenberg Castle Church in Germany. His arguments against the false doctrine in the Roman Catholic Church were instrumental to the Reformation. To mark the anniversary, the Christian Institute published a leaflet that considers how the Reformation is still relevant for today. We also featured a 12-part series by Dr Mike Reeves on the impact of the Reformation on our own nation. In a separate animated video, Dr. Reeves narrates how Luther's reading of the Bible led him to the great truth of salvation through faith in Christ alone. Luther saw that the church had left behind what the Bible taught and was even making things up for its own gain. He decided he must teach against these false ideas. He made his complaints public by nailing them to the place in town where people published important documents the door of the castle church. He explained that it wasn't possible to buy God's forgiveness or to live a life that was good enough to deserve to know God. 
His writings showed that God wants to forgive the wrong we've done and that this is only possible because Jesus, the Son of God, came to pay the punishment that our wrong deserved. Jesus did this as he died in our place. Well, that's all for this week. For regular updates and information on all of our stories, plus much more, visit our website at christian.org.uk. Until next time, goodbye. Thank you.